saints until we begin to call upon him. Amen. That's what he is, saints. He's a helper. He's here for us Amen. for help. I'm throwing half of my sermon out there already from, for now, for two weeks, for two weeks. Man, I had to pour it out. It's all right, it's good. You know what Jesus began to tell him, you know, I'm sending you somebody. Yes. He says, go back and stay where I tell you. Because you know what, if the apostles would have came out and they would have went back and they would have went back and ran the streets, they would have gone back to their old working and doing what they had. But Jesus said, no, go back and wait right here where, where I'm telling you to wait. I'm sending you somebody. I'm sending you somebody that's going to give you understanding and remembrance to what you did. If you stop and think about it, there was no computers. There was no laptops. There was, they didn't have no books, nothing to write on. When Jesus left, Jesus just, he was gone. They didn't have nothing to write on. They didn't have paper to, to put down their notes, nowhere to put their notes. All they spoke was what Jesus, what they saw Jesus do. But that's why they had to go back and wait on Jesus. They had to go back and wait on the Holy Spirit. When they were all in one accord, the Spirit fell. He says he will bring you back to remembrance. The things that they saw, they became back and they came back to remembrance. So they went out and they brought the word, saints. Let God give it to you in remembrance. Everything that you've read, everything that you've been through, that's something that God has given you in life. You know what? That's a testimony. Yes. Yes. That's your testimony. Yes. Yes. I'm going to cut it because you know what? I'm going to give you all my sermon for two weeks. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, that I've been studying. And it's powerful, saints. It's, the Holy Spirit is here to help. But you know what? He's not going to help until we call upon him. We have to call on him. That's why he's called a helper. He's not called, I'm going to do it for you. God said, I'm going to send you somebody that's going to do it for you. No, I'm going to send you a helper that's going to get you through your hard times. And he's going to get you through the times in your life. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, Pastor, I'm going to let you take it over. because, Man, I might get into your notes here. <laughs> God bless you. We thank you guys. Let's just give God all the glory this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Well, I'll just keep our church in prayer because, you know, the enemy doesn't never stop. Uh, we've been having problems with the internet, with our login the whole time. We just got word that 40, hour, uh, 40 minutes of service with no audio. So people were watching, but they couldn't hear anything. But they stayed on. You saw your mouth moving. But, you know, that's the way it is. It's so far, four Sundays in a row, at the beginning of the service, we got nothing but problems. But you know who that is. You know. But it doesn't matter. You know what? Back in the old days, there was no internet. There was no cameras. There was no streaming. You know what? If you wanted to receive your miracle, you couldn't get it online. You come to church. You want to get your miracle? You come to church. The church has gotten so spoiled, I'll stay home and I'll watch it from the internet. Well, God didn't call you for the internet. God called you to be in the house of the Lord. He said, come to the house of prayer. He said, come to the house of prayer. We've gotten too spoiled with the internet. That we sometimes, I'll get to the point where I'm going to shut it completely down. And if you want to, you come to church. I'm getting to that point. I'm getting to that point. You want to come? You come receive. You come in person. The internet will not be on. Let's get to that point. Because there's nothing but problems. But let's get to this word today. Are you ready? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You open your Bibles in 2 Peter chapter 1. We're calling about to confirm your calling and your election. Amen. How many want to confirm your calling and your election? Some people come to church, some people get saved, and they don't even know why they got saved. They don't even know why they're coming or they're going. They don't even know what their purpose in life is, and they wonder why they're so depressed. Come on. Come on. People are depressed. They get up, they go to work, and they go to work. They go to Friday, they get paid, they pay their bills, they go to work, they go Friday. They get paid, they pay their bills. That's all they know. <laughs> That's all they know. But you know what? We, the children of God, have to show the world that there's something more. Yes. 
Amen. 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 Are you ready? Second Peter chapter one verse one. Amen. Amen. I don't know if we can get it on the screen or not, but that's all right. I'm going to read it. Greetings from Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to all of you who share in the same valuable faith. I'm reading out of the Easy Reading Translation. It says, to all of you who share in the same valuable faith that we have. Right? Is faith valuable to you? I hope it is. Because without it, you can't please him. This faith was given to us. Just look what Peter's saying here. This faith, what kind of faith? The faith that's valuable. The now faith, according to Hebrews 11.1. 1, it's the now faith. The one that always works in the now. Hallelujah. This faith was given to us because our God and Savior Jesus Christ always, say always. Always. They but always does what is good and right. Father, your word is anointed. Your Father, your word is already powerful. Lord, but what I pray to you this morning, that you anoint our minds and our ears and our hearts to be able to receive your word, that your word is like a seed that is planted, and it planted, Lord God, I want it to, and I desire it to be planted on good ground. Lord, not on the wayside, not on, stone, on stones, not in a dry place, but Lord, I don't want the wind to blow my seed of your word. I don't want the wind to blow it. I don't want the the sun to scorch it. I don't want the weeds to choke it. But Lord, I want your seed of your word to be planted on good ground. Lord, that some will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold return. Father, this is your word. And your word that goes forth never returns void, but it accomplishes what you set out to do and it prospers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your people prosper according to your word. Father, let your word be a penetrated in the hearts of your people and Lord use me today to only speak what you want me to speak Lord God lead me Holy Spirit uh, by your word today in the mighty name of Jesus uh, we give you praise and glory and honor you may be seated if you can if you got Holy Ghost jumping beans inside your spirit that's okay amen thank you for your enthusiasm I'm going to read this one more time because this is good. Yeah. Greetings from Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To all of you who share in the same valuable faith that we have. This faith was given to us because our God and Savior Jesus Christ always does what is good and right. But the question is, do we always do? Come on, come on. Come on. That's good. The question is, do we always do? You know what gets in our way is our flesh. Come on. That's good. Don't let your flesh be the be the the agent, how would you say, that, that determines your, your right or your good and evil. Yes, come on. Don't let your flesh determine oh, what you do on a daily basis from the moment you wake up to the moment you lay your head down. But he says this faith, you see, there's a faith that will move you the faith that is given to us by God and Jesus Christ is it will always does what is good and right. Verse 2, grace and peace be given to you more and more. Because now you know God is Jesus our Lord. Jesus, in verse 3, I'll keep reading it. Jesus has the power of God. His power has given us everything. Say everything. everything. Has he given us some things? He said he's given us everything. 
we need. So when someone comes to me and says, Pastor, I just can't make it. I just can't do it. He said, tell that devil and tell your mind and tell your flesh, no. Tell him if you have to read scripture to your flesh, be it so. Look at your flesh and speak to your flesh and no. Second Peter chapter 1 says this. It says that God has the power. He's given me everything for a living what? He has given me everything for a living and a godly life. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. We receive all of this. Mm. We have received all of this by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you, uh-oh. What? We know the word enable, and we, word, we know the word disable. Well, according to the word, it says, because of his glory and his excellence, uh, he has given us great and precious promises. What kind of promises? He says it. These, this is Peter the apostle. This is Peter, the one that walks by, just like I see my shadow right here because of the lights. Uh, this is the same Peter that by his shadow, demons cast down, the sick are healed, people are delivered. The same Peter that denied the Lord three times. The same Peter that was afraid to die. The same Peter that when he got filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, the same Peter was transformed. He was no longer the same. This is the same Peter that now is telling you these. These are the promises that enable you and me to share his divine nature. Whew. Wait a minute, wait a minute, go back. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Who is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. He's not talking about his own divine nature. He's talking about the divine nature of Jesus. Look what he's saying. He's saying these are the promises that enable you, me, to share his divine nature. That takes you to a whole nother level. That takes you to a whole nother level. Because now we're talking about a supernatural in the realm of the spirit type of level. That the only way that he said the promise that enables us to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption. Caused by what? You know this flesh is never satisfied. This flesh always wants more. But I can escape this. You and I can escape the world's corruption caused by human desire. Look at our world today. Right now, we right now we got multiple wars going on. Why? Why do we have multiple wars? We got Hamas, then October 7th on the day of Yom Kippur, they attacked Israel, and, and then from there, now they, uh, Israel attacked a, a, a general in Syria, and then in Syria, now Iran says we retaliate back, and just the other day, they shot uh, uh, droid, uh, um, drones with missiles, and right now, they're in war, right now, why? Corruption caused by human desires because everybody wants power. They want dominion over someone else. We got China on the earth, on the verges of saying that Taiwan belongs to us, that we're going to invade Taiwan. We got North Korea testing missiles that can reach the, our west coast of California. We got, this is going on for ages, but why now even more? Because this human desire, this flesh is never satisfied. It always wants more. And you think this just happens in our government? It happens in church. Woo. Yeah. 
It happens in the house of God where it shouldn't. Here, we should want to promote one another. Honor one another. Matter of fact, it's to the point that when we're talking about discipleship or what we do in our DDLs, you see, I, I share things on DDL that I don't share on a Sunday morning because it's a different type of, 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 of how to say, of, of movement because on DDLs, developing disciples into leaders on the first, we change it to first Friday of every month on the evening and you should want to come. You should be here because if you want to change, see, Sunday morning is an, a message of inspiration. I come to inspire you. I come to encourage you. I come to lift you up by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God. But on Friday, DDLs, I don't come to inspire you. On Friday nights, uh, I get under your flesh. On Friday nights, I come to discipline your flesh by the word of God. That's true discipleship. That's why Matthew 28, the last verses, the last chapter, Jesus says, Go ye into all the nations and make ye disciples. He didn't say go make preachers. Everybody wants to be a preacher. But they don't want to be a disciple. You can't be a preacher unless you're a disciple because the disciples were disciples before they became apostles. <laughs> Getting quiet. You see, I share things because I have a whole teaching outline that I share on DDLs because I'm not there to inspire you. I'm there to show you that how to be a strong Christian. If you're just coming to church on Sundays and you're just a Sunday goer, then my question is, where is your commitment? Where is your loyalty to the kingdom? Hello? Hmm. You ain't crying on me. You don't say amen, say ouch. I, I want to stand back here for a minute. I, I, I feel some. I feel somebody's going to throw something at me. If I see it coming, I'm going to duck. No. I know you guys love the word. I know you love the word. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Now we can go to the next, please. Look what Peter's saying. In view of all this, make some efforts. Oh, 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 I read the wrong one. I, I, read, I read it wrong. I read it. Thank you for correcting me. Uh -huh. Check if you're reading. In view of all this, what he just said from one through four, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Look, folks, I'm doing three things in my life and even more in between. I'm trying to run the ministry full time to the best I can after after hours. I go to I go to almost every ACN meeting that I can go to. I go to training. I go to Saturday mornings. I go to the training. I go help other people. I still go visit people at the hospital. I visit people at their house. I run. I have a full time job, fifty to sixty hours a week. I do three major things, but yet I still make time for the things of God. Why? Because I value my faith. I value my relationship, my intimacy with God. I don't need nobody to hold my hand. Will you go to church? Well, I guess so. I don't need nobody holding my hand to go to work. Wow. I'm in a cave somewhere. I don't need nobody holding my hand for anything. I started working since I was very young. I started working. My first job was, was busboying at Chico's Mexican restaurant. No longer around. Over the way over there. 
I bust boy and I, and I got promoted to dishwasher. Woo! Dollar sixty five an hour. Woo! Wait, who the, told some this generation said, like, "What's that?" I thought that was big back then. And then I got later on. I got a little older. I, I, I went to Waterburger, and it was two sixty five an hour. When the, as wages went up, and then I went to McDonald's, flipping more burgers. But you know what? Everything that I did, no matter what job I had, I did it to the best. I wanted to be the best burger flipper. I wanted to be the best burger dresser. I wanted to be the best uh, worker because I had this mindset that whatever I do, I don't need nobody holding my hand. Whatever I I do I do that which is good and I do that which is right but there are those that need to be holding their hand all the time so I say to them that's why you need discipleship you need to grow up I shouldn't tell you to come to church you should know I shouldn't tell you to give to God you should know I shouldn't tell you to pray for you one another. You should know. But if I got to call you and remind you, something's wrong. <laughs> Some people ain't used to these type of messages. They want those panic men to rub my shoulder and be everything good. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Ain't that right? If he promised me, shouldn't I respond back? If he promised me life, eternal life, healing, deliverance, prosperity, blessings, if he promised me life, why should I not give in return? Every effort to respond to God, supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge. If I make time in my life, I'm trying to show you example. I'm not telling you to do something that I don't do. I show you by example. If that toilet needs cleaning, guess who cleans it? If the trash is to be thrown, guess who throws it? Oh, I ain't hearing anything now. If the carpet is dirty, I pull out the vacuum cleaner and vacuum clean. I ain't too big just because I'm the senior pastor. I'm never too big or too high that I can't lower myself on my knees and serve the house of God. There's some people who come to church and they don't want to help nothing. They don't want to do nothing in the house of God. I just want to come and sit there and be good. Then you wonder why you never promote it. Because you never want to do nothing in the house of God. You just want to come and sit. Leave your DNA in the chair. We didn't come to the house of God to be pew warmers. The house of God is a training center so that you could do something for the kingdom. The house of God is a medical center so that you can be healed if you're sick, healed if you're confused or, 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 or something's on in your spirit life or your physical life. You have to be healed, restored, and trained and developed and edified and built up, equipped and di di discipled so that you could do the work of the kingdom. Read somebody out there. They, they, they come to me and say, Pastor, why, why do we have, you know, have more people in church? I said, did you invite somebody? <laughs> Shepherds don't make sheep. <laughs> Shepherds don't make sheep. Sheep make sheep. Shepherds tend to sheep. Shepherds fight the wolves. For the sheep. Shepherds carry a staff and see the wolf from afar gazing at the sheep and looks at the wolf and waves the rod and says, uh uh, these are God's sheep. You ain't getting near God's sheep. I'll smack you on the head, devil, with the rod of the word of God that tells you that these are God's sheep. These are God's people. But it's the truth. Uh, there are people that come church year after year. They come to church year after year. They're three years, five years, ten years, twenty years in the church. And I ask them, what you have done? Nothing. Ooh. It's funny that you'll do something for you. You'll do above and beyond for your boss to a job you really don't even enjoy. 
But yet you do it anyways. But you don't even enjoy it. Matter of fact, you get home frustrated. Some people are so frustrated, the, the cat and dog take it. They go, meow. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Ay. Ay. Supplement your faith with generous provision and moral excellence. Moral excellence. Moral excellence. That's a word we don't hear very much anymore. If we do things, we should do things with excellence. I'll give you an example. Sometimes I walk around and, and the chairs are off like that. Just, you, know, you think, oh, what's that? That's just that's my meal. That's, don't, that's really nothing important. But that's not the thing. That's not the story. The thing is, if you see something out of place, yeah. excellence. Yeah. If you see things out of place, why not? Yeah, it looks good now. And somebody from over there is looking at you like, why are they doing that? I don't know how to do all that. It's just church. I question how your house is. Because if you can't make sure God's house has excellence, but I say, if your house does have excellence, but you don't care for God's house excellence, my question. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> moral excellence, moral excellence with knowledge. Keep going. Watch this. I better hurry up because I'm going to get in trouble. And knowledge with self-control. Yeah, did you have to say that, Pastor? I'll be honest. I, this is something that I got to deal with. I, 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 are you, will you be honest with yourself? This is something that I have to deal with every day. I got to get my flesh. I got to get my temper. I got to get everything that sometimes wants to muster me up. I got to, mm, mm, no. Mm, 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 mm. I'm not going to say it. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I want to say it so bad. Mm, mm. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. There is a self-control that is, that is something that you have to work on. It's called moral excellence. Brings knowledge, but the knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance. Remember I taught you before the difference between endurance and perseverance. Endurance is how much can you take. But perseverance is how long can you take it. You know, you know, when, when you go to your favorite gym, those that like to go to the gym and watch your figure. That's what I do. I go to the mirror and watch my figure. I'm watching it. <laughs> Can't say I'm not watching it. I'm watching it. It ain't getting no better, but I'm watching it. <laughs> but you know, you go to the gym and you got these power lifters. Now get this. Get this revelation. Don't miss it. There's these people that are called power lifters. They put that big old leather belt. <laughs> they tighten it up real tight. They can't even breathe. And they put these gloves on, they wrap around their wrists so they don't damage. And then they get, they get all this baby powder in their hands and they're getting ready so they don't slip off the rock. And they got all these weights on the other side. It's so heavy that when they the bar starts to bend. And they're powdered and they get there, they squat down, they get ready. And, they, and, they're, and their veins are popping out of their ears and just. And, they, and then they, they release it. Pow, it just drops. 
and they look around and they, and, and they want to make sure everybody saw they, they walk around. I seen them. They walk around. Like, I just looked at that. Well, that's great. That's great. But my question is, how many times can you lift it? In one session, how many times? You see, we Christians are power lifters. We have the power of the Holy Ghost uh, that I can go through one battle into another battle, into another battle, into another battle. Say, God, uh, for God is with me. Who can be against me? Hallelujah. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's not just about enduring. It's about persevering. not how much you can lift or how much you can take but how long can you take it that's what Jesus did he showed us that that you see the, the, that when they buffeted and hit them he said okay I took that I'm bleeding all over my face my face is all swollen I just took a beating for the for, for where I know where I'm heading next then they take him to the whipping pole and they whoop him and whoop him and whoop him and whoop him and he's bleeding all over the place his blood's being splattered all over the place and yet he's taking every whip because every whip he's thinking of you Cada chicoteada que recibió Jesús en sus espaldas estaba pensando de usted. He was thinking of you and me. Every stripe that he took, and those bones and those metals on the end of the whip of the Roman whips, as they would rip his flesh and blood splattered all over the place. Every time he took a whipping, he was thinking of you and me. He said, I can't give up. I got. Two, I got two whippings. Oh, but the Romans, they do 40 minus one. I got 37 to go. My God, if you and me, we probably would have just collapsed and died at the third, or maybe the second or the third, and that was it. But he took them for you and me. Because he wanted to make a promise to you and me that not only did he endure the cross, but he persevered the cross. <sighs> But it takes self-control, something that all of us, I include myself in it every single day, that we have to take this flesh and control it by the power of the word of God. Sometimes we got to control our tongue. Sometimes we talk too much. Am I the only one? You're in the house of God, don't lie. Don't profit lie. Sometimes we, we, and I say it myself, you know, my, my wife is my, is my, uh, my uh, she's my witness, and she's my rebuke all the time. I'll say something, she don't say that. I'll say something, she don't say that. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Self-control is something we work on on a daily basis. Ah, but let me talk about something you may think that I overlooked. You see, you think you get away because you didn't say it here. Oh, but you sneaky ones, you may not speak it here, but you spoke it here. It's the same thing because God hears your thoughts. You may not say it here, but you said it here. I'm not, when I say self-control, I'm not talking about your mouth. I'm talking about your mind. I'm giving you some nuggets. I'm giving you revelation. It, the Paul said in Romans, he said that the greatest battles are fought in the field of your mind. If you conquer here, you conquer out here. It's not what comes out of your mouth. It's what comes out of your mind. And it's funny because there's people that I can see just with their faces that when if there's something that they don't like of me for what, whatever it is. I, some I don't even know. I can, their mind says it all because their face reflects what their mind said. I go, God bless somebody, and they got that face. You see, the action is they'll still shake my hand, sister. They'll still see the outside. 
They think they cover it by the, I'll, I'll shake his hand. I really don't like him, but I'm going to shake his hand. You see, they think that that's okay. But in the mind, God see in the mind, you, that, that handshake was dead. That sh handshake didn't mean nothing. It looked good on the outside, but it wasn't good on the inside. Because the mind was thinking, I don't like this guy. I don't like this preacher. I don't like the way he preaches. I, I don't like the way he combs his hair. I <laughs> Did I just say that? I know I got a lot of white. It's okay. They say wisdom, wisdom, right? Wisdom, wisdom. Now, I've always told you, you know I'm on the level because the bubble's in the middle. <laughs> Endurance. There's, there's, it's the mind. Self-control, it's not so much the mouth. It's the mind. We speak more aquí. We speak more right here than we do out here. If we, oh, Lord, Lord. Uh, you see, when you and I speak it here, it's because it's already been processed here that now it's gotten to the emotion stirred up that now by the time we speak it here, it's because we could not have self-control to hold it back. It comes out. And then we will justify, say, well, I am, that's just the way I am. That's who I am. That's what I am. You know, my mama went that way. My grandma went that way. My great, 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 the Bible says that when I come to Christ, all old things have passed away and all things have become new, that I am a new creature. So don't let the enemy deceive you. Say, well, that's in my generation. That's in my family line, my bloodline. Sever it in the name of Jesus. Sever your bloodline. Sever your generation line. Sever your family line. Sever it because what came from the past isn't good. When all my, uh, my, other, my other family members were suffering through divorce, I mean, divorce, 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 I asked my mom, I said, Mom, uh, can you give me a little family history? I said, was the tia, the tia, the tia, the tia, the, were, were there a lot of divorces in the family? She goes, oh, see me, oh, see me. Yes. I said, no wonder. Were there a lot of alcoholics? Yes, mijo. No wonder. I don't want me, and I don't want my children, and my children's children. You know what I did? When me and my wife, I, 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 when we got to that point of our life, I said, devil, the buck stops here. What came from my past, what came from my family line, my bloodline, my, my generational line, I sever all curses, all family curses, all bloodline curses, all generational curses. I sever them in the name of Jesus. And because we got wise and we severed them look at now the trend how it changed you see the first marriages ended up in divorce and because we got wise by the power of god we severed them and now majority of all marriages in my family are past 40 years of marriage 40 to 45 to 50 years of marriage. My father and my mother, they were not the best couple as a husband and wife, but they endured and they persevered for 65 years together. You see, what you do now matters for your generation to come. For what I do matters for you. Self-control with, I, that, that's a hard word right there. Self-control with, that's something that we got to work on, not just self-control, but we got to work with pain. Because sometimes some people are, mm, sometimes you deal with people that, mm, Lord, just excuse me for five minutes, Lord. Lord, let me backslide for five minutes. Lord, let me show this sister, let me show this brother uh, the five-fold ministry. 
for five minutes, Lord. After I show them the fivefold ministry, if that don't work, Lord, I'll show them the Ten Commandments. If it's not under grace, we'll go into the law. <laughs> Woo! Five minutes, Lord. I got no patience for this woman, this man. Five, Lord, and I'll repent after five minutes, Lord. Just let me just just let me, just let me get in the flesh for five minutes, Lord. And the Lord says, no. <laughs> no. Five minutes do you wrong. You may not come back of those five minutes. You might regret what you did, and now in five minutes you can't even get back. How many know it takes a lifetime to build a testimony? It takes a lifetime to build a testimony. And you can lose it in five minutes. If I were to be unfaithful to my wife, I would lose your trust. I would lose the integrity. I would lose the honor. If all of a sudden you saw me with another woman. 40 years of building a testimony all because I wanted to, 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 to give this flesh a little bit of pleasure. For what? It isn't worth it. Paid the price too much. I've I went through too many battles. I've gone through too many storms. I've gone through too many trials. I've gone through the test. We've gone through the fire. 40 years of it. And to lose it for just one moment of the flesh. No, it isn't worth it. It isn't worth it. It ain't worth losing the, 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 the love of my life, the love of my youth. My children, I would hurt and devastate my children. And most of all, I wouldn't get my third piece. <laughs> when she showed me the tortilla, boy, she had me. When she showed the tortilla after command, she, I said, honey, you had me a hello. <laughs> and when she pulled out the butter, no. Did you have me a hello? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Self-control. Patience. It's a hard word, patience. Because patience don't come automatically. The scripture tells you how you get patient. Because see, when I was a young preacher, I said, I asked God for three things. I said, Lord, love for your word, love and hunger for your word. Number two, love for the souls. But at 19, I really didn't know what I was asking for when I asked for the third. I said, Lord, and give me patience. I didn't know the scripture yet on the part where it says, tribulation worketh patience. So when you and I ask for patience, what we're really asking for, Lord, send the trials. That's what you're, because how other, how, how else are you going to grow in the maturity of your patience without the trials? But I didn't know that then. I'm like, oh, God, give me, I just thought, that, oh, Lord, that was a good prayer. Lord, give, give me patience. And then all hell broke loose. The devil attacking my marriage in our young in our young years. We were in a roller coaster experience. Sometimes they talk about the ACN up and down, up and down. Keep the bar. They teach you in training. But the thing in the same thing with our marriage. Our marriage was up. It was good times and then whack, down bad times. Good, good times, whack, down bad times. And the devil was at work to destroy us so that I would not have the children I have today that bless you in praise and worship, uh, that praise you in prophecy, that pray, uh, that bless you, hallelujah, in every which way. Because why? Because there was a man and woman that was willing to endure, that was willing to go through patient trial tribulation, that was willing to go through moral excellence, that no matter what we've gone through, that we stuck it through the thick and through the thin. Patience. I didn't know then. I, I, I said, Lord, give me patience, Lord. Oh, so, so, patience. 
And then for the first time, when somebody showed me that scripture, he said, did you know about this scripture here? He said, you said you asked God for patience. Did you, let me show you the scripture. It says, tribulation worketh patience. I said, oh, my God. What did I ask for? But how other else are you going to learn patience? Patience, endurance with godliness. What is godliness to you? Think about it. What is godliness? I just heard somebody. That's all right. You can Google it. Google it. See what Google says. It's not the Bible, but see what it says. What does it say? Oi, 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 the Lord's speaking. <laughs> what was that? Ah. Ah, praise God. Hey, that's up. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Did you get that? The course. Of an everyday life. The course of everyday life. It's not, well, good. Think about it. In other words, that's right. In other words, it's not something you choose to do whenever you want to, to live whenever you want to. It's something you and I choose. We have to make a, a solemn decision to live an everyday life with the endurance and godliness. Keep going. I'm going to wrap it up here in a while. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love. With what? Just want to make sure you're reading with me. And godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, everything we just read from one through seven, the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it's not enough just to know the scriptures. It's not enough just to know them. I know, I know so many that are more eloquent speakers than me. That I sit and I, I listen to them ministering. And I sit there like, ah, oh, man, I like the way they speak. I like the words they use. Wow, I like the analogies. I like those. Wow, good Lord, I don't, gotta, I don't speak like that. But yet at the same time, I have to be who God called me to be. I can't be somebody else. You see, in my, as a young preacher, I try to be everybody. At 19, 20, 21, I was, trying to, I was trying to find who I was. I, I would preach a little bit like Dwight Thompson. I'd preach a little bit like Rod Parsley. I'd preach a little bit like uh, T.D. Jakes in the early days. I'd preach a little bit like, I, like you know, I, I, I'd take a little bit of each great preacher that at the time, that in those early years that I would admire, and, 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 oh, and Adrian Rogers, boy, he's a tremendous teacher, Adrian Rogers, and and, and, and all those, and I would do a little bit of everybody. And, and, and yet at the same time, somebody asked me, who are you? And it, and it took time. Finally, I, I think it was like in my late 30s, early 40s, all of a sudden, like the light bulb went on. All of a sudden, it just, poof. I 
just, it just, the Lord did it for me. I just realized who, that, who I am in the gospel. And I started to minister the way the Lord would use me to minister. And then I realized throughout the years that I was more productive, more effective, just being who God called me to be, not to mimic anybody else, but to be who God called me to be. And once I realized that, I minister to this day. I minister the way I minister, how God moves me and uses me in this way. I can't be nobody else. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not enough just to know the word. It's you've got to live the word. Next one, please. But those who fail to develop. Woo, but those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind. Forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So dear brothers and sisters. Work hard to prove. That you really are. Among those. God has called. And chosen. What did I say today is. To confirm your calling. And your election. And here he's saying. Peter's still saying to the church. Dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you are really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. You see, people that backslide, people that fall away, people that walk away from God is because they didn't know who they were in Christ. They got discouraged. The enemy filled their ears and their minds with lies. You're good for nothing. You'll never make it. You know, people. And then they tell you more lies. You see that sister, look at the way they look at you. They, and it's not even true. But they fill your mind with so many things to make you believe and to bring your self-esteem low. But when you know what your calling is and you know what your election is, it says, do these things and you will never fall away. Amen. Then God will give you a grand entrance. Woo! <laughs> then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop right there. Because if I don't, I'll just keep on going. I can't do that. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. I, I want to go into his kingdom. I want to go into his kingdom. I believe it's, can you put up Matthew 25? I believe that's, I believe that's it. It's been a while. Can you put up Matthew 25? Chapter 25. You remember the bridesmaid that had the lamps? Can I, can, can I just I'll end it with this? There was 10. It says five were wise, five were foolish. I look at the church today. I look at the condition of the church today. There are wise and there's foolish. But here's the thing is. Some people think that the entire church will be caught up with the Lord. No, they won't. Because all ten, if you read the scriptures carefully, the way I like to study, all ten were virgins. Not five were and five were not, no. All ten were virgins. And all ten had wedding garments. But only five went to the wedding and five were left behind. Not many can say that the oil represents the spirit. Some had enough oil for the journey. Because how many understand that 
the bride goes out and meets the groom. Because Jesus said that according even to Jewish customs, that they will announce the grooms that when he's coming. And it says that five were foolish, five were wise. He says five had enough oil, the other ones did not. And so far the other five said, according you know the story, I'm paraphrasing everything, getting cut it short. It says, give us, look at this. They said, give us some of your oil. You know that uh, the way I take this, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But you know how I take this? I take this like they're saying, give me some of your salvation. Because I know your salvation is more than mine, meaning I, you, you, you're serving God 100%, and I've been serving God 50%. So can I have a little bit of yours so that I can make it to the wedding as well? Because they said, give us some of your oil. And the wise said, not so. Listen to the, the wisdom. Of he says, not so. He said, because if we do, we will not have enough for ourselves. And you know that the story says, at the midnight hour, that's not sometimes, you never know Jesus may come at the midnight hour. Who knows? If he does... I, I, I want my body to be asleep, but I want my spirit to be awake. But at the midnight hour, it says the cry of the bridegroom. It says, the bridegroom cometh. And all, get this, all ten virgins heard the voice. Didn't say five only and five did not. It says all ten virgins heard the the same voice they heard. That means the the, some, the church is going to hear something. All ten heard the voice, and all ten arose, but only five can make the journey to meet the bridegroom. The other five were told by the other five. He says, "Go to the marketplace and go buy some more for yourself." Why do things at the last minute when you can do it before? I, I'm, I'm trying to give you some wisdom here. So, mira, mira. The five did not just stay there, did they not? It says they went to the marketplace. They bought some oil. It's, and they came back. But when they came back, it was too late. The door was closed. Don't be like the foolish virgins that you think your mediocre or mediocre Christianity is enough. Either you're going to serve him with your whole heart, all mind, all strength, all body, everything, because you're going to be like the foolish that don't have enough. And you're going to want to borrow from your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister. Give me some of your oil. Give me some of your salvation so I can make it in. No, you got to make it in for yourself. I can't share with you my son. This is my, God saved me. I can share you the gospel and how to receive the same. But it's a personal thing. It's an intimate thing. And this one saved, always saved, <laughs> that, that's, that's the wrong gospel. You confess the Lord one time, live like the devil, still make it to heaven. No. No. Because if that were so, it would have never been written in scripture. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I've had a lot of debates with that one saved internal security doctrine. Some with greater education than I have. Degrees on the walls, DDs and THDs, and say, I don't care what your degrees are. I know what the Bible says. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 26, it says that after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for that sin. In Jude, the, the last verse of the Jude, the, the, the people don't know that Jude was a prophet, that Jude was a judgment prophet. People don't know that. It says that Jude says, he says, that saving others with fear by pulling them out of the fire, hating the garments spotted by the flesh. 
You and I got to hate the garment spotted by the flesh, and we got to love people enough to pull them out of the fire. I love you, my brother. I love you, my sister. I can't let you live this way. You can't be going to the bars. You can't be going to the nudie bars. You can't be going to the dances. You can't be doing that. You can't be taking drugs. You can't be drinking alcohol. You can't and still think you're going to make it to heaven. You can't committing adultery, fornication, all that, and make it to heaven. You can't be stealing from God and thinking you're making it because the Bible says in the last verse of Revelation says that, that whoremongers, liars, thieves, those operating from many divination, spirits, and many others, drunkards, brawlers, will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Oh, this is too much. I better cry. <laughs> but I tell you one thing, I'm gonna play it safe. I'm not gonna play around with my salvation. I'm going to respect my salvation because I'm going to respect the one that gave me it. I'm going to respect and honor the one that died for me and, and loved me enough that even though I wasn't worthy, you and I weren't worthy of salvation. You and I weren't worthy for it. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. It's a free gift. So I received it as a gift, but it's a gift that would cost. You see, it was a free gift for you and me, but it wasn't free for him. It cost him his blood. It cost him his life. And it cost him that he left majesty. He left glory. He left his throne to be born in a manger. He was rich and became poor for us. That he says he was tempted with all diverse temptations as we were, but he endured. He overcame for us. So if he did all that for me, then I need to honor and revere what he did for me. And I must do for him. If he laid down his life for me, I need to lay down my life for him. Please stand on your feet. I got, I got to just shut up. Thank you, Lord. I pray that this message does you good. That edifies you, builds you up, that gave you some revelation. You see, the, the, when you read the word, if, if you read the word and you get no revelation, it doesn't do anything for you. Because there are those who read the Bible like a story tell. It's not a story tell. The word of God is the bread of life. Yes. 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 It represents the manna from heaven. That's why Jesus told the Pharisees and the scribes, he told them when he says, you know, uh, uh, he says, well, well, Moses brought us manna and Jesus corrected him he says Moses didn't bring you manna he said my father brought the manna but then he goes even deeper and he reveals he says uh, the manna is standing right in front of you and you don't even recognize him that's why he said that he is the bread of life he said that he's the way not the way Oprah says it Oprah teaches her viewers that there are many ways to whatever your God is. No, Oprah, there is no other way. Jesus said he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He said that no man cometh to the Father but through him. We don't come to the Father by denominations, by religion. We come to the Father by him and only him. Because in another case, he said that I am the door. Woo. He's the door as well. He's many things. But he's, there's only one way. And I want to make it that way. I want to make it in him. I've devoted my life all these years to him. My wife has. That's why we're here. Or else we wouldn't be here. I think we probably would have been lost. Who knows? We probably wouldn't have been married. We would have probably been divorced. She would have been somewhere else, and I would have been somewhere else, and we wouldn't have the kids that we have today that worship and praise God. You see, and I tell this to everybody because I want to tell you this to encourage you for your children. You see, my, our children don't serve God because they have to because mom and dad make them. No, no. They serve God because they want to. 
they have have a relationship with God personally and intimately with God. You know how that happened? Not because all through the years we forced them. No, we didn't force them. What? How they got richer? Because they saw us as examples. They saw how much we sacrificed, how much we gave, how much we give our lives to Him, how much we devote our lives to Him, and because we loved Him, and that they learned that kind of love because us as examples. Be an example for your children. Be an example for husband and wife. He said, well, I don't have a, 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 a saved husband. Oh, but let me tell you what scripture says. But pastor, you don't know my husband is abusive. Pastor Elias was abusive. But look what God did with my brother. Saved him, set him free, renewed him, transformed him, filled him with the spirit. And now for all the rest of these years, he's an awesome man and a teacher of the word of God. He was heavily in drugs, heavily in alcohol, never at home majority of the time. But yet God transformed him. Why? Because when you have someone that believes that no matter what they look like, what they sound like, what they do, if you just believe that God is able... I'm not saying it's going to be easy. There's going to be some warfare. But my question is, will you be willing to go through the warfare? You got to be willing. Because scripture says, oh wife, you don't know. Because of your, now I'll paraphrase it, because of your commitment, your loyalty to God. He said, you'll, you'll make a way for that unbelieving husband to get saved. You don't know. Father, let's pray. Father, there are many that are lost. And I know those in the world are lost. I know that, but they're already lost. They need you as Savior and a Lord. They need you as their master of their life. They need you to heal them. Many are sick in body. Father, they, they, they say the statistics. Father God, you know you know them. I, I don't need to tell you, but I'll say it out loud. Father, the statistics are that we have never in all generations had people that are suffering with such high numbers of high blood pressure, sugar, diabetes, and Lord God, Alzheimer's. Lord God, back in the 40s and the 50s, uh, Lord, it was very, very little numbers. Uh, and now the numbers have is increased astronomically, but we wonder why. Because instead of getting close Closer to you, Lord God, they've excommunicated you out of our government. They excommunicated you out of our schools and universities. Lord, they say that they don't need you. They don't want you. And they wonder why things are the way they are. But God, those that need you, that don't know about you, Lord, reach out to them. Holy Spirit, send men and women that are not afraid to preach the good news of the gospel. Lord, send them out, Lord. Send them out to the north, the south, the east, and the west. Send them out to the highways and the byways. Send them out into the alleys, Lord God. Send out men and women that are not afraid to speak the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us, God. God, they're not afraid, Father God. Fill them with your spirit to reach out to those that need to be reached. But, Lord, not only do I pray for the lost that are out in this world, Lord God, but, Lord, I pray for the lost and the confused that are in your house. There are many in your house that are lost, that all they know is to fulfill a religious tradition. But, Lord, they have never known you as personal Lord and Savior. They have been taught and raised to be loyal to a religion or denomination. But, Lord, they were never taught about you, really in how to know you as their Lord and Savior so that their name would be written in the Lamb's Book of of life uh, that when that day comes uh, and when that trumpet sounds uh, that we would hear that trumpet uh, we would hear what John said in Revelation 4 he said I heard a voice the sound of a trumpet uh, and I heard the voice said come up hither Lord the day is going to come the church is going to hear the voice uh, of the archangel the sound of the trumpet uh, that we're going to hear where the church will be taken up uh, and we will hear come up hither Lord I don't want to go by myself uh, 
I don't want to be selfish. Lord, I want to take as many as I can with me to the kingdom, to your kingdom, Lord. I don't want to go by myself. I want to take as many souls with me to your kingdom so that when we get there, Father, I want to hear only the words you said to the parables to your disciples. I want to hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear the other words. I don't want to hear the other phrase. I don't want to hear the other words that said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear well done thou good and faithful servant we got filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord, are there are those here today under the sound of my voice. Uh, even those, if, if the online is working, I'm not sure, Father God. But even those, the son of God, if those have not, not experienced the power from on high, Lord, give them the gift. Uh, Lord, give them the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Lord, there are those that try to live for you and, they, and they're weak, Lord God. They're, 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 oh, they barely can make it. But why? Because they need the power from on high. They need the power. They need the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Lord, there are those right now under the sound of my voice uh, that Lord that they need you uh, Holy Spirit they need you they need the gift of the Holy Ghost uh, they need the power from on high uh, Lord that will deliver them that will save them uh, and keep them from harm oh God my God in the mighty name of Jesus Lord let them experience the manifestation and the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost in their life uh, that will lead and guide them where to go and how to live oh God how to reach out to the lost. My God, my God, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Mm, Lord, anyone here today, Lord, I raise my hands to you because you're worthy. Lord, anyone here today that has been hurting, Lord, heal their hurt. If there are those that have been weak in their body, Lord, give them strength. If there's someone, Lord, that has been going through confusion, Lord, give them power, love, and a sound mind. If they've experienced fear, Lord, give them the gift, the operation of the gift of faith. Give them courage. Give them strength. Lord, I lift my hands to you in worship. I worship you, Lord.
Your miracle will be waiting for you. Your miracle is here. Your healing is here. Your encouragement is here. I can't give it, but he can. He has it here for you.
now you're coming into a new season, a new chapter of your life as well, and you did that, that move by faith. Because God is bringing you to a, a new family, as you have said. And we're not going to be a family that will forsake you or leave you or no, we'll be a family that will be united even closer than we've ever been. But what's been happening at home has been weighing you down. Because there hasn't been that unity that there should have been. But today we're gonna, we're gonna pray with you and with me. Pray for you and with me. How many church? As we praise your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you Levantemos nuestros manos en ella de actitud, tu gloria y la honra. Levantemos nuestras manos en señal de gratitud a ti, milagroso Salvador. of 
the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory. For your good, and I get the glory, say God. Step by step, continue in my presence, continue in my word. You will be my mouthpiece. You are my mouthpiece, says God. I speak to you, says the Lord, through my word, through the different things that you see, says God. And I will continue to perform that which I've promised you, says God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Altísimo. <laughs> Él es altísimo. El, a Él merece toda gloria y toda honra. Gracias, Cristo. Mm, gracias, Señor. Aleluya. Aleluya. There's some things that have concerned you, sis, that um, I know Apostle was speaking a while ago. It was like a connection 
there, there's some things that there's uh, I, I see that there's some things not here in Lubbock some things in another city God is saying that those things that concern the way heavy in your heart, those things that are in your heart, God says, I am putting my hand even on that family member, says the Lord. And, and you will see, you will, because it's been a promise that has already been given to you. Things that the Lord has already declared in your heart. And God says, I'm faithful. I am faithful of that which I promised. It's not, it's, you, it's not, how do I say, there's family members in another city. And my hand is upon them says God and I'm going to do a work in their lives in their homes you're going to see that happen amen thank you Jesus hallelujah it won't be long Jeremiah it won't be long God says that which you have wanted to see it, it has to do with uh, with uh, your employment <laughs> It won't be long. God's answering prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. En tu hijo, hermana. Es lo que oigo yo, tu hijo. En tu hijo. Mm -hmm. Dios dice que va a ser algo grande. Que él va a mirar. Él va a reconocer. Oh, esto nomás viene por la mano de Dios. Es lo que oigo en el Espíritu que Dios está haciendo. Es que Dios dice. Aleluya. Gloria a Dios. Aleluya. Mm -hmm. Aleluya. Brother George, you just come over here and stand for your for your wife, for your beautiful wife. Gosh, we love her so much. Sister Alice, we just love her. Uh, Mando Santos, come and just lay hands on Brother George as he, Minister Santos, lay hands on, on Brother George as he's standing for his wife. His wife is at home uh, sick, but the Lord is going to restore. He's going to bring, he's going to heal. She wanted to be here so bad. She loves to be in the house of God. I mean, this is her life flow. And, and when she can come to the house of God, she cries. It, it, but we thank God that God is healing. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Gracias, Señor. Gracias, Cristo. Gracias, Señor. Mija, you, you come over here too. You, Mija, you, yes, ma'am, you come over here. You're going to stand in proxy for your dad. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is raising up the men of God. Amen. God is raising up the men of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. To take their place. God, do what you got to do. Let it happen, Lord. Let it be so. Be so. Yes, Jesus. Gracias, Señor, for sanando. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn it around, Jesus. Uh, Minister Santos. Pray for Mijita right here for her. She's standing for her dad. Do a work, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. You do so. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is moving right now. He's just moving. Lord, I do so. 
says I hear something about seven days something about the number seven do it Lord do it Lord do it Lord gracias He's healing. There's a place right here. He's healing. No infection. Ah, God says, I have this, my daughter. It's in my hands, says the Lord. The spider doesn't belong to you, says the Lord. The battle is mine, says the Lord. Stand strong, stand strong, stand strong. I will move and I will speak, says God. Ah, an oil, an oil. I, I feel the oil. I feel the oil. I feel the oil. Feel the oil, feel the oil, feel the oil, I feel the oil, feel the oil, ay 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 ay, I feel the oil, I the oil of joy, the oil of peace, the oil of joy, ah, there it is, there it is, the oil of joy, the oil of peace. Just receive it. Soak it all in. You've needed this. You, because the battle, but God says, I've been feeling you today. I've been feeling you today. Receive the oil. Receive the oil. There's a wind. Did you feel that? There's a wind, a wind that came over you. Ah, Reveal, reveal, a reveal, a reveal, an infilling, says God. I feel the wind, my Lord. God is, there's like an angel just breathing over you. Just breathing over you. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Because of what is coming, says God. Because of what I promised you, you're going to be leaping, jumping, dancing. Because of what I promised you, I shall complete my daughter. Yes. 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 Oh my God, it's like a just drips, just oil, just drips, just oil. Rabatita mochete de, rande de mosete, rande de mos, aha, rande de mositia. You're not gonna carry this no more. Uh-uh. You're not 